Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans of you this Sunday morning. I hope it finds you well during this international football break. There's lots of news to talk about. Brendan Rodgers, Dermot Desmond, back in the manager and a few other Celtic players that have um, been spoke about in the recent couple of days. I'm going to cover that. And I've got to say, this, this is the first time in since 2020 that I haven't made Celtic content on a daily basis. It's the biggest break I've had. The only break that I usually take from making Celtic content is Christmas Day. And if you go back to the channel over the last three and a bit years, you'll see that it's been daily content. And I think it was well entitled to this break that I finally had. And it was well needed. It was well needed. We're back, we're refreshed, and there's lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. Um, talking to some people over the weekend, and we'll talk about the Rocco Vata situation, first of all, before we talk about the fact that our glorious owner is back in Brendan Rogers. We'll keep that snippet to the end because there's some fantastic information coming out about Brendan Rogers and our owner. So make sure you watch to the end of the video. Anyway, Rocco Vata is a young Irish player and playing the under 20. One's an Islander, he's under 23, who knows, but he's, he, was on, he was on fire, he was on fire, it could be said, and he scored a couple of cracking goals, and Watford have entered the race, Watford have entered the race, Celtic still haven't got this player, the deal tied up, um, the table, the offer is on the table for the youngster, it has been since uh, Christmas, and he's still refusing to sign the contract. Is he as good as what people say? People say that when they've seen him at Celtic and the B team, he's not been particularly that good. And um, there's other players that are coming through the system that are better, that are better than Rocco Vata. But is it another youngster? I mean, I've, I always said in this channel, I always say that we try to back the youngsters as much as possible. But the fact that he's refusing to sign a Celtic contract is, um, and he, he's basically putting Celtic over a barrel. I mean, who does he think he is? Who does he think he is? Um, but the fact is that Watford are now enter talks over a potential move for the Celtic starlet. Is he a starlet? At 18 year old, he is out of contract and Celtic will lose him for a measly sum. There was competition for AC Milan, Bologna, Sampdoria, um, and a couple of other teams. Celtic, for me, if they were going to sell him, they should have, they're only going to get about 300 grand for him. And, and that's compensation. Um, they'll only get 300 grand compensation for the fact that he has came through the youth system. Although it is just his first full professional contract as uh, over 18. But uh, the guy that's came through the academy is still holding Celtic over a barrel when it comes to it. Should Celtic just tell him, look, uh, on you go, son. You, you've had your chance. You're not going to sign a new contract. Um, when you look at one player that left Scotland that is doing fantastically well, um, and it wasn't a Celtic player, but if you look at Lewis Ferguson, um, he left Scotland and he's playing absolutely fantastic for Bologna and he looks like he's going to go for big money. I want Celtic to try and keep as much of their homegrown talent as, as we can. We need it. We look at what we did when we sold Tierney for 25 million. We'll talk about him because I don't think he's going to come back to Celtic. I think he's enjoying his life far too much in Spain, but that'll all come out in the summer. Anyway, tell me what you think about Rocco Vata and the whole situation with that. Um, and could Rodgers, could Rodgers be about to, uh, Celtic played in a closed door game during the week, uh, during this week, and could Toki, Tomoki Awata be a player that's about to be dramatically dropped by Celtic? Could Awata be dramatically dropped by Celtic because the one and only Rio Hitati is walking back into the building? We're going to talk about the injured players at Celtic just now because the latest news injury update is obviously Callum McGregor is, has been out with an Achilles injury. Um, but the manager has said, he said he's hopeful that the, the Celtic captain, um, we don't want to go down the, the leader and legend route, the same as what Scott Brown had, but he is our captain and he's a fantastic, and it shows how much we've missed him in the last couple of games. We weren't as fluent in midfield, it has to be said. A lot of people were saying, get rid of him and, you know, drop him out of the team. But we've seen the performances that we've had at Celtic since he was he was out injured. Scotland International obviously missed the Scotland games this week, but it has been suggested that he might be back for the game uh, next weekend. There's no guarantee of that, but but he could be back. And it'll be interesting to see if him and Rio Hitati both make the squad. Central defence, uh, Mar uh, Mark Noroki, uh, big Rocky, he's hamstring injury. He's been out for about a month now as well, and uh, there's no involvement as yet, which means that he's not going to be fit for the Livingston game. Rio Tati did make 45 minutes of football. Yes, Brendan Rodgers had a, a, a closed-door game 
And during the weekend, Rio Hattati had a bounce game with St. Man and uh, Gustav Lager Belke and O made that game also, which is interesting because we've kind of forgotten about O since the one and only Irishman came in from Norwich and everyone said it was a bad, the worst thing ever to bring him in from Norwich, but he scored a couple of cracking goals and we didn't have an option to buy, but we've kind of forgotten about O, so it's good that O got some game time and big Gustav Lager Belke who remember the story with him in the last transfer window. It's going to be an interesting summer when it comes to Gustav. Will he or will he leave Celtic? Because let's face it, um, as a player, he could have really just spit the dummy and said, look, Brendan, you told me I'm not good enough and now you're wanting me back in the team because you've had some defensive woes once again. So um, it's going to be an interesting one. But the fact that Rio Hitati could come back into the team means only one thing. means only one thing. Tomoki Awata is the player that would be dropped out of that midfield. I can't see them dropping Paolo Bernardo and all the nonsense during the week that we're going to sign Paolo Bernardo for £7 million. It's on the plums, rate. There's not a chance that Celtic will sign Paolo Bernardo for that kind of money. He's nowhere near as in the league of the likes of Jota, who came from the same club, Benfica. Um, and, and we all know that. We all know that he's, he's not the same kind of talent. Is he the same kind of price range? Definitely not. Definitely not. And, and for what we've had this season from him, um, he's maybe a, th- a £3 million player, £4 million player. I don't know, Tim, what you think? What you think that Paolo Bernardo is worth in the comment section? That'll be an interesting one. And say hi, say hi in the comments also. Anyway, Tomoki Awata will be the player, if you ask me, that will be dropped if Rio Hitati walks back into the team. I think Rio Hitati. Um, as a player that on his day and in the run-in to this, the end of this season, the, the games that we have left, let's face it, who would you rather have in the team, Tomoki Awata or an, an even 80% fit Rio Hitati? Rio Hitati, we know what he can do. His form was absolutely terrible, terrible at the beginning of the season, hence the reason that the one and only David Turnbull was getting in the team before him. And everyone was in uproar. Why on earth is David Turnbull starting the season before Tomoki Awata? We'll look back to the beginning of um, the season and look to the pre-season. Tomoki Awata's, um, Rio Hitati's head just wasn't in it. Rio Hitati, his form was terrible. I mean, he was he thought he was going to get a big transfer move, and so did Celtic, to be fair. Celtic thought they were going to get an offer for Hitati, and it didn't transpire. Anyway, let's get on to the manager. Let's get on to the matter. In fact, we'll talk about Alistair Johnson first of all. Alistair Johnson, he's been away with the international duty and he's been talking about Celtic and he feels like he's part of the furniture. He's part of the furniture. He's, um, he's also relishing learning from people within the dressing room and the people that have been at Celtic for a long time. And you've got to say this. People that have been saying for the past couple of weeks is James Forrest is done. James Forrest is done. I mean, James e. Forrest, and I've said it long enough. People have said, why has James Forrest got a three-year contract? And people are saying, well, we need to buy an experience. You cannot buy the type of experience that James Forrest has as a player for Celtic when you look at the titles he's won, when you look at the trophies he's won, the cups, the run in the cups. He knows what it takes, and that's the kind of person that you keep in the background at Celtic. You cannot buy that experience. You cannot buy that kind of experience to have that loyalty that comes through the system. He's coming through the system. I mean, you've got young frame that's coming through and a couple of other young guys that are coming through that's the that's the future of the club you know james forrest was one of those players one day and it's to say oh he's a good servant like pass him on not a chance you do not get rid of a player like james forrest because he was once a good servant for if i would play james forrest for 60 minutes every day of the week just to get the game time out of mind and that experience especially in the running especially on the running anyway Let's move on. He's, uh, the one and only Alistair, Jansen's, uh, Alistair Johnston has been talking about Callum McGregor and he says that he's, he's one of the most inspiring players that he's ever played with. Talking about inspiring, talking about inspiring, is Brendan Rodgers will this week don his shirt and tie with a legal team, a legal team completely funded by our owner, a legal team that has top, top QCs in this legal team to fight the SFA and the Masonicness that comes from the referees, Lanarkshire Referees Association. Brendan Rodgers will be taken to task over the fact that um, 
he's a bad mouth of the referees in one game, but I'm sure there's lots of other people and lots of other managers have spoken just as shockingly about the referees over the case of the season. I've not been taken to the, over the coals, as it says. But Brendan Rodgers was, um, last week was at an evening, a charity evening in New York with the one and only Henrik Larsson, which then got people talking. Is Henrik Larsson going to come back to Celtic in some capacity? No, it was all about Brendan Rodgers and, you know, um, them all raising money for the Celtic Foundation. And they raised a fantastic amount of money, as they do. Celtic fans around the world make fantastic contributions to the Celtic Foundation on a daily basis that isn't really spoken about. Isn't really spoken about. Anyway, Brendan Rodgers met up with a glorious owner and a lot of people have um, taken umbrance with their owner saying that he should invest more money when you look at the financial fair play rules that celtic can't spend over you know they can't go out and do what the clubs used to do um it just isn't allowed anymore but our owner what he can do is he can employ a top qc team to back brendan and then seemingly have a dossier dossier of results var and out of sorts that have been against celtic and they have this dossier and they're going to take this dossier all the way to the top so it's going to be an interesting week the media is going to go into complete frenzy and meltdown when this all comes out so just keep an eye out for the rest uh, to this um hearing this week and it'll be interesting because we all know that they really want to ban brendan rogers from the touchline before the safe Conian game, the Rangers game, the Derby. They all know they, they probably want to try and give him as much a big a ban as possible to keep him away from the, the touchline to try and hinder Celtic winning the league. Ah, anyone but Celtic. And if you haven't watched the Paul Larkin documentary, anyone but Celtic, please do it. It's a fantastic documentary and the book. Anyway, on that note. Leeds United are thinking about Matt O'Reilly again. You've got to remember Leeds put in a £10 million bid for Matt O'Reilly last summer. Celtic then went on to reject a £20 million, what was it, £18 million bid for Matt O'Reilly in the last transfer window from our, a team that was played in the Champions League at Atletico Madrid. Celtic did tell them what the selling price would be. So I fully expect, uh, well, it's come out and said that Leeds could make a move for the player again this summer. Will they come in with a £20 million plus offer? I don't think so. I don't think Leeds would um, would go to that extent. But what it does mean, it means that Matt O'Reilly, there's every chance Matt O'Reilly will be sold this summer. So... Will we spend the money on Paolo Bernardo? Is he worth what people are saying? I don't think so. If we do sell Matt O'Reilly, we're definitely signing Paolo Bernardo. It's as simple as that. It's the way that Celtic have been going. Anyway, it's been fantastic to be back. Tell me what you think about the video in the comments. Make sure you give the video a massive thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. I mean, I'm back with daily Celtic content. And on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world.